ለመማር ወደ ትምህርት ተቋም መሄድ ግድ አይደለም ናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ ራሳችሁን ከኮሮና ቫይረስ ወረርሽኝ የጠበቃችሁ በቤታችሁ ወይም በተመቻችሁ ቦታ በኢንተርኔት አማካኝነት በኦንላይን ትምህርታችሁ መከታተል ትችላላችሁ ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ ኢኒሲቲዩት ኦፍ ኮመርሻል ማኔጅመንት አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር የሚሰጡ ትምህርቶችን ተከታተላችሁ በ6 ስቶር ጊዜ በአለም አቀፍ ደረጃ ተቀባይነት ያለውን የስልጣና ማስረጃ ባለቤት መሆን ይቻላል ልምድ ባላችሁ መምራን እየተማራ ጥያቄና መልስ የክፍል ስራዎች ፈተና መፈተን ክፍል ውስጥ እንዳላችሁት አይነት በኦንላይን ባላችሁበት ቦታ ከናሽናል አቪሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እህት ኩባንያ uh though it is a continuation of where of where we had uh, stopped last time uh we had looked at uh the portfolio analysis how to determine risk uh, return of a single project and then of a portfolio all right using the 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 the, the, the portfolio formula or makowitz formula but uh there are other models that we can use also to determine uh, risk and return of an asset and of a portfolio so uh today i wanted us to go through uh the other models uh, so that uh, we are able to evaluate projects based on the some other variables other than the probability and uh, the expected returns so um so first of all we were, we are to see how to derive an efficient portfolio if you recall last time we said uh we need to come up with an optimal portfolio uh mm -hmm. one that will uh, maximize returns at the minimal risk possible all right but yeah. uh you find in a market there are variety of projects mm -hmm. and uh, you have to select out of the many that can easily combine and we saw that uh one, those ones that can give a, neg a negative correlation coefficient Mm -hmm. uh we saw how to determine that and it measures the level of association between the mm -hmm. the two assets or two projects that uh, we may be investing in yeah. so uh, after doing that yeah. we have also to to determine the efficient front account because we said uh an open portfolio can have up to up to 20 uh, securities or assets in it so uh, how do we select these assets because we have but uh, we need to to see how many that uh, we, we can uh, actually uh, select to find for our we looked at uh, two illustrations uh illustration two we went through it uh, I think up to up to the end we answered actually basically all the questions uh, led to this uh, the efficient set of a portfolio <coughs> so here depending on uh, the risk attitudes of the investors and uh, uh, the type of risk as we saw in our last discussion we have market risk and uh, and uh, uh, business risk so uh, investors have different attitudes towards risk uh, some prefer high risk in order to obtain high returns of course high risk uh, 
associated with high returns. Uh, these are referred to as risk takers. Uh, while others, while others, uh, Emmebet, please mute your mic. Thank you. So while others um, prefer low risk in order to obtain low returns. So low risk, low returns, uh, low risk projects are always associated with low returns uh, because the risk levels are low and, uh, and there's some, uh, a bit of certainty in the returns. Then the high risk projects, uh, which are uh, more risky and uh, and their expected returns will always be high. <coughs> so the low risk takers are called uh, risk averse. <coughs> However, in the market, there will be a portfolio which will offer the highest returns for a given level of risk, or one that will offer the lowest risk for a given level of return. Now, uh, depending on the attitude of the investor, so you select according to your attitude and you find you will always be jungled between uh, the risk and return of a particular portfolio and, uh, and, uh, and as we saw, uh, the preference is normally for high returns project with low risks and, uh, and, uh, and uh, that's basically uh, uh, the, 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 the concept in the finance that we use. By plotting the expected returns of a portfolio against the portfolio risk as measured by standard deviation, the following may be observed. So if you, you draw, for example, um, let me just say, uh, try to come up with this. Assuming we have, so this is a straight line anyway. And uh, this is uh, also straight line. So this is portfolio returns. And uh, <coughs> this is a uh, risk, portfolio risk. So risk is uh, by standard deviation one uh, portfolio P that is uh, uh, P two one and so on and so on. So R P one R P two and so on and so on and so on. So uh, we can have our efficient fund account here. Efficient front curve, EFC. Uh, so we have uh, projects, uh, portfolio A, Portfolio B, portfolio C, portfolio D. 
Now we have, uh, assuming we have uh, F here. All right. Then we have our E here, you know. It is like this. Then D, we have uh, like this. E. So F is here, E is here. Okay, now looking at this uh, plotting of uh, portfolios, this is F. Portfolio A, B, C, D. Now, if you are to, to select between A and F, which one would you go for? If you are to select between portfolio A and portfolio F, which one would you go for? <coughs> Melat, which one would you select? Melat? Yes, sir. How are you? Fine. All right, which one would you select if you are to select between A and F? And why? I think A. Why? Mm. Why A and not F? It's, I think it's minimum risk. Because of minimum risk. Because of minimum risk. And how about return? Mm, the same as uh, risk. No, okay. Or it's high risk. Because high a, return. Yeah? It's high return. A has high return and minimum risk. And F the opposite of A. <laughs> okay, that's good trial. <laughs> well, you can try. Amy bet. If you are to select between A and F, which one would you select? Between A and F, which one would you select? In my bed. Yes, doctor. Which um, one would you select? If you have a portfolio of A and F, which one would you select and why? No idea. I think I would select A, just like uh, Melat said. But the reason is because A and F have the same returns. You can see they are on the same line. So the returns are the same. However, the risk for A is lower than the risk for F. So you can see risk for A is next to zero, while F is far away from zero, which means it's increasing. 
So the risk for F is more than the risk for A. However, they have the same returns, isn't it? So you would select A because it offers the highest, the, the same returns, but the least risk, isn't it? Compared to F. How about B and E? Which one would you select? B and E. B and E. I think E. Why E? It's minimum risk and the same return. Minimum risk and the same return? Yeah. And then that, would you, would you want to do select? I think B. Why? It was minimum risk, I think. Minimum risk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Minimum risk? Yeah. I select B. <laughs> I get in my heart. Hello. I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, sorry, sorry for my late. We are too busy today. Okay. Now it appears can now All change right. in currency. I was yeah? told so. Uh, no. I was told so. Okay, okay. So which it's one did you select between B and E? Uh, I think uh, I select B. Why? Because because uh, the, there is higher return and higher risk compared to E. High, high return and high risk. High return yeah. and minimum risk, yeah. I would select B because B has the highest return compared yeah. to E, though they have yeah. the same risk. You can see they are falling on the same line. Okay. So the, risk minimum. Level is the, same. the risk is the same. Yeah. The two portfolios, isn't it? Because they are falling on the same line. But when you go this way, you find B is higher than E. Because E mm. will be somewhere here. Right? So, so, so B has the least return. Uh, sorry, E has the least return compared to B. B has a higher mm. return. That's why it's being, uh, uh, you know, uh, located here. Uh, where the return and, and risk meet, that's when you, you plot them. So you find that uh, uh, they have the same risk levels but uh, B has the highest return. So you select B, okay? So you find that uh, portfolios that, uh, there's a line joining these portfolios, all right? Now you'll find A, B, C, D are falling along this line. So this is the line we are calling the efficient frontier curve. The efficient frontier curve, all right? So you select, if you are to select portfolios, then you would select portfolios that are lie along this line or they fall above this line. Assuming uh, J is here, then J would be qualified because it's above the efficient front account. And the projects that are falling below, all right, portfolio that are falling below the, the efficient front account, these ones are inferior, they don't qualify. They are inferior because you can see their risk levels are higher compared to these ones that are falling above. Because if you are falling above this line, it means your risk levels are reducing and your returns are increasing. Okay? So this is the cutoff point. The line indicates to you the cutoff point of projects that you need to select. Those ones that fall along the line and above the line. But those ones falling below the line, those ones do not form an optimal portfolio. I think that is clear. So if you go back to our screen, huh? all right, where we were. Um, no. 
So we are saying if you these are the observations, portfolios B and E have equal risk, all right? However, portfolio uh, B has a higher return compared with, with the return of portfolio E. And we saw that, all right? We saw that. Uh, B and E, B has higher returns, but same risk compared to E, and E has lower risk, so lower returns. So that means uh, uh, it is uh, uh, B qualifies, all right? Then we also have portfolio A and F have equal returns. However, portfolio A has a lower risk than portfolio F. So we take portfolio A. So portfolio A, B, C, and D are either offering the highest returns at a given level of risk or lowest risk at a given <coughs> level of return. These portfolios combine together form the efficient set. So the efficient set of portfolios uh, are found along the efficient front half. These portfolios are joined together by a concave line called the efficient front half curve. So I think we should be able to explain what the efficient funder curve is and how we can select projects that uh, form the optimal uh, portfolio uh, uh, that we can uh, pick up for investment. All portfolios below the efficient funder curve and the efficient set are said to be dominated or inferior portfolios because they don't offer optimum risk return trade-off. So this is what I was saying, portfolios that are falling below the efficient frontal curve or the efficient set, those ones are inferior and they're dominated project, I mean portfolios. So they don't offer optimal return, uh, risk return trade-off. Now the investor's utility is normally determined from the indifference curves which can be superimposed on the efficient set. The higher the indifferent curve, the higher is the utility derived. Now, this is just uh, uh, the, the, the concept of uh, uh, different uh, indifference uh, investors in the investor's uh, attitude. So as we said, we have those ones who are risk takers. So the, the utilities will indicate the, 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 the the differences in uh, in uh, in uh, which one where will the efficient front curve fall? So, uh, but basically, this the the the, the structure of uh, an efficient uh, front curve or an efficient set of portfolios, and uh, how we do the analysis and to come up with the efficient set of portfolios. Okay, um, any questions? Uh, uh, because uh, from here, we, we want to go into uh, the market, uh, the capital market lines and uh, come up with a question that we can use to determine um, uh, the, 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 the valuation of the securities in the market. Um, in the absence of risk-free securities, all efficient portfolios will be found along the efficient front curve. Now, risk-free assets are uh, those assets that uh, have no risk attached to them or minimum risk that is attached to them. For example, the treasury bills, uh, treasury bonds, these are the government securities. They are normally considered to be risk-free. So uh, because they are also being, uh, uh, you know, they are, they, are, they are transacting in the market. So because we are operating in the market, then they are part and uh, they can form part of your portfolio uh, because there are returns associated with the such securities and uh, which one may purchase 
uh, in the situation of uh, getting some return. So, however, if there exists some securities in the market which do not contain any element of risk, such securities will be called risk-free assets. Examples include treasury bills and treasury bonds. So, uh, these are government securities basically, and, uh, and the, the assurance of getting returns. I will jump to you. Almost certain. Um, so um, um, that's why they are considered as risk-free assets. So you will find like when you are uh, drawing the, the capital market line, you find we are going to start uh, above the risk-free uh, asset because there is no element of risk as to that. Um, if risky assets and riskless assets are combined to form a portfolio, a line extended from the risk-free threat is become tangent to the efficient set curve at the market portfolio is known as the capital market line, the CML. It indicates the risk and return relationship of a portfolio consisting of risky assets or securities and risk-free securities. Now, if you are to illustrate that, um, if you are to illustrate that, uh, you are to draw the So uh, this is the expected return. So RM is the expected return of the market. All right. And then uh, this is the, the market risk. The standard deviation of the M, that is market risk. All right. So market risk is the, the return in the market. So you will find our, our RF is here, the risk-free assets. That's from here. And uh, the CML line goes like this. That is the CML line. Capital market line. Now, if you want to determine, you can use this to determine the risk premium. So this area here is the risk premium. <coughs> risk premium. which is given as expected return to the market uh, minus return of the risk-free asset. Okay, so this is the risk premium. Uh, so this zero, starting from zero. So the risk premium is here. So you'll find this area because of the return. That's why we are starting at this point. It has some returns, but no risk. So it's normally uh, located along the, the Y axis, but not from zero above zero because this now there the return and at F, the return is this level, but the risk is zero. You can see the risk is zero, but the return has some, this, this is a point of return, 
all right? This is the level of return from zero to here, that's our returns. But now the risk is zero because it's on the Y axis. So this is the CML line. We can find this line uh, using an equation, all right? And further on, we'll see the importance of that line uh, in uh, trying to explain the capital market, uh, the CAPEM model. Okay, now it indicates the risk and return relationship <laughs> of the consistent and risk free. Um, now, we are assuming that this risk-free security, we have other securities along this, all right? This, this is our initial efficient front account. But because we have a risk-free uh, element or project or security within our portfolio, then we call this one capital market line, all right? The capital market line. So the equation for the capital market line is given us uh, RP, that is the return of the portfolio, is equals to RF, return of risk-free asset, or risk-free rate, plus expected return in the market, minus risk-free return or rate, uh, multiplied by standard deviation of portfolio over standard deviation of the market. So these are the, 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 the initials that uh, actually represent the equation, uh, the expected return of a portfolio. This one, so you know, expected return of market, risk free rate, standard deviation of a portfolio, and standard deviation of the market. So capital market line can be used to establish whether the portfolio is correctly valued, undervalued, or overvalued. So um, we can use this to determine whether the portfolios are uh, overvalued, undervalued, or correctly valued. And um, this can help us tell when to buy or when to purchase because uh, of the securities we have uh, so that we make gains, all right? Uh, so when when we when we buy when they are uh, the, the securities are uh, valued in the market or undervalued in the market and when do we dispose of so those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves as investors or uh, managers so that uh, we we dispose of at the right time or the right timing and purchase at the right timing so that we minimize uh, uh, costs and, uh, and actually uh, maximize on the returns. Now, whenever a portfolio falls above the CML, all right, then it's undervalued. So please note this, if the portfolio falls above the <coughs> market line, then it's undervalued. If it falls along the capital market line, it is correctly valued, all right? And if it falls below the capital market line, then it is uh, overvalued, okay? So below is overvaluation, above is uh, undervaluation. And uh, we're talking about the capital market line. So there is this illustration here, we can use this to, to show how to to interpret this and uh, tell whether it's an evaluation or overvaluation. So first of all, we need to note the equation so that uh, we are able to apply the illustration. So uh, let's take the equation, all right? share the equation so that uh, we follow with the equation. So this <coughs> line is the 
the CML equation is given as uh, RP is equals to RF plus RM minus RM So, uh, if we are to press this, so we have so in the uh, first scenario. illustration for A we have portfolio A B C and D now for A our expected return is 15% and uh, the standard deviation is 5 so 15% standard deviation is 5 okay በተመረጥ ከፍ ብሎ መብረር ይቻላል ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይ ስህት ኩባንያ ከከፍተኛ ትምርት አግባብነት እና ጥራት ኤጀንሲ ሙሉ ቅናን ባገኘንባቸው በማስተርስ ዲግሪ MBA በስትራቴጂክ ማኔጅመንት MBA በባንኪንግ እና ፋይናንስ MBA በቢዝነስ ሊደርሺፕ MBA በሪስክ እና ኢንሹራንስ MSc በኢንተርናሽናል ትሬድ እና ኢኮኖሚክስ ዘርፎች በእውቀት ለመቅረጽ ይበቁ ፕሮፌሰሮቻችን አረንጓዴ መብራታቸውን አብርተዋል በነገራችን ላይ በኬንያ ሀገር ከሚገኙ ስመጥር ዩኒቨርሲቲዎች በሚመጡ ፕሮፌሰሮች የትኩረት መስክ ትምርቶቹ መሰጣታቸው ለዩ ያደርገናል በመርጥ የትምርት ስርዓት የተገነባው ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ በመጀመሪያ ዲግሪ በአቪዬሽን ማኔጅመንት በሆቴል ማኔጅመንት በአካውንቲንግ እና ፋይናንስ በማርኬቲንግ ማኔጅመንት አስተማማኝ ትምርት ይገብዩና ራስዎንና ሀገሩን ይለውጡ አድራሻ 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስደው መንገድ ላይ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ የናሽናል ኤርዌይ ስህት ኩባንያ ህልመውን አሁን ያደርጋል so uh, expected return is but uh, portfolio is 15 and uh standard deviation of the portfolio equals to 5 that is a portfolio a are we together yes yes okay. so this this figures i'm just getting them from uh, table our illustration yes so you can see for a we have 15 and the standard deviation is five. five. So I want to use this to determine uh, the equation, the equation line, the CML line, all right? Uh, which we have been given the formula as this one. So for, for portfolio A, for portfolio A, uh, CML, The CML is equals to uh, RT is equals to what is the risk free rate? According to our illustration, have you been given the risk free rate? If the market return is 10%, all right, market return is 10%. 
So that applies to all. And uh, the market uh, standard deviation is 4%. The market standard deviation is 4%. And the risk free rate is 6%. Okay, so uh, uh, RF, and then uh, we have uh, the standard deviation of the market. So this one, <coughs> so we are also told that uh, RF is equals to six percent. Uh, expected return in the market RM we are told is ten percent. Then uh, the standard deviation of the market is equals to four percent. So those ones we are given. So now we need substitute to determine our CML for portfolio A. So our RF is oh. is six, okay, plus RM is ten. Our RM is here, which is ten, and uh, six is our RF. I'm just following this. Then uh, standard deviation of P five. So this times five over uh, market standard deviation, which is four. So what would this one give us? What is the return of the portfolio for A? Can you work it out and give me the answer? Is it 30? Mm -hmm. 30. <coughs> 30, yeah. 30? I think so. Four. Four times six, twenty-four. Four times five, much too high. Who else has a different number? So please. Emmet, what are you getting? Emmet. I'm trying to do it, doctor. Uh, this is a second, you are done. So, the uh, Grima, you said you got 30%. Yes. What's a different answer? No different answer, we go by that. It means everybody got 30%. Let me see. I'm getting 11%.
Eleven percent. Huh? How could it be? Huh? How could it be? How could it be? How could it be? Okay. Uh, you remember board mass? Very much. Okay, we have left there four. Four, yes. Bracket so, of of what? Yes. Bracket of four. Uh, Is it plus or uh, times six? Times. Times. Okay, bracket, four times. Six bracket times. Of, Uh, okay. As it's plus, okay, plus. It's not. It's not thirty times. We have taken the six times. Is it plus or times? This is plus. Yes, it is. I think it is plus. Okay, I have make mistakes here. We have make the multiplication. By the equation, I'm just substituting. Yeah. Yes. So it's okay. Now it's eleven. It's eleven. Okay. You agree? I'll look at the metal sound. No, just write it. Six plus no? Okay, times are going on. Oh. Yeah. Uh. So you open the bracket. Open the bracket. This is four. Mm. Yep. So you multiply by five over four. Then you, you cancel it. Okay. Then we are cancelled. We Six. left six plus five. Times five. Are we in agreement? Yes, no, I agree. Okay. So uh are we is the is the You, you should compare the 11 against mm -hmm. the 15%. The 15%. Okay. This 15%. This is the expected of the portfolio. But uh, mm -hmm. our CML is 11. Our CML so? is 11. So okay. compare 11 and 15. So is it undervalued or overvalued? Undervalued. Huh? Undervalued, isn't it? Why? Okay. Because below the expected return. Why? Mm. Um, 15 is falling above 15 is falling above 11. Yeah. 15 is falling above the CML line. And we said uh, portfolios that are falling above the CML line, they are undervalued portfolios. Those ones that are falling are overvalued. Are we together? Those ones that are falling along the CML line, then those ones be and uh, tell them whether undervalued or overvalued. What is the uh, expected return for B? It's 13, and the standard deviation is 6. So it's 13 and 6. So uh, 13. Six percent, and this is uh, RP expected. So, can you work out and tell me the uh, line and substitute? 
the risk free rate will remain the same the expected return and the market will remain the same the standard deviation of the market will remain the same so can you substitute it and give me the the answer so we compare 12 with what the uh, 50 uh, no 13 12 and 13 percent yes so is it uh, overvalued or undervalued i think uh, undervalued why because sml less than the expected return 30 percent 30 percent is above the sml <coughs> undervalued. Mm. Can you do for C? For C? Mm -hmm. uh. Uh, is 10 and uh, the standard deviation is 7 10 and 7 6 13 hmm? 13 13 Mm. 13 yes it is 13 again 10 against 10 yeah it is overvalued this is overvalued yes <coughs> for d D. D. Yes. And back to the question, the illustration. Okay. Uh, for D, we have 16 and 10. 10. 16 10. expected return and 10 the standard Equal. deviation. Equal. 16. What? 16. 16. Okay. SML is 16. One six. So it is 16. Yeah. Okay. Against 16. Against 16. 16. Mm. Yes. Overvalued or undervalued? Uh, there is no overvalued or undervalued. It's equal. 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 No. equal no. Mm. So what, the, what does that mean? Risk free. Risk free. The asset is? Uh -huh. The asset is? Correctly valued. Uh -huh. Correctly valued. Okay. <coughs> so uh, this is how we can uh, tell whether the valuation of the assets in the market is correctly done, undervalued or overvalued. But okay. what is the meaning of this undervalued or overvalued? When do we buy and when do we dispose of? All right. So let's go back to our slides and we'll see how we we can make use of that to to make our decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, for A, as we saw, we had 11%. Expected return of A of 15% falls above the CML, all right? So which is equal to the portfolio is undervalued 
by market forces. The current portfolio price is lower than its fair value. That's what it means. The current portfolio price is lower than its fair value. So when it's lower than its fair value, then that means that's when you purchase, isn't it? We purchase at that time because it's lower than its fair value, isn't it? Uh, so just the same concept we use when we are explaining the efficient front curve, all right? Uh, the efficient front curve, uh, it was here. You remember the, the, the graph or the CML line? You remember what I drawn here, the CML line, starting from here? So this is undervalued, as we had said, undervalued. And this is overvalued. Over, overvalued. So, uh, and according to our efficient front curve, this is the CML line. According to our efficient front curve, we said projects that fall above the front curve are optimal. And this, they don't uh, give uh, optimal returns. So these ones, are, we don't go for this. So the same principle applies. When it's undervalued, that's when we buy, all right? And we sell when it's overvalued because how, that's how we make gains, all right? We sell when it's overvalued so that we make gains. And when it's undervalued, we purchase because it will be cheaper to buy than its fair value, okay? So uh, the same uh, uh, concept as we saw in the, in the optimal portfolio setup or set is the same principle that applies here, the ML line and the evaluation of the assets. Uh, for B, uh, undervalued, expected return of B of 13% falls above the CML line, which implies the portfolio is undervalued by market forces. For C, all right, is 13%. Uh, the expected return of C of 10% falls below the CML. The portfolio is overvalued by market forces. The current stock price is higher than its fair value. So it's overvalued. The current stock price is, fair, is <coughs> higher than its, its fair value. Uh, instead of uh, it being uh, $10, it's valued at $15. So that is our valuation. And therefore, that's the time we can, buy, we can sell off. Because when we dispose of, we make a gain of $5. Uh, for D, it's 16%. So you can see this uh, fairly uh, correctly valued uh, project. So expected return of 16% falls along the same MAL line. The portfolio is efficient. <laughs> Uh, the, it means the portfolio oh, is efficiently oh. priced. Oh. Now, oh there is uh, this concept of the, the buy low, sell high concept, isn't it? So this applies here. When they are undervalued, that's when you buy. And when they are overvalued, that's when you sell. That is a concept of buy low, sell high concept. Buying low and selling high essentially means buying undervalued stocks and selling them when they are, when they become overvalued. So as a manager, we can uh, make use of this principle to advise the board when to dispose of uh, the assets we are holding and when to purchase uh, <coughs> assets or to invest. Any question? No, no. Uh, are we clear? Yes. Good. Now, there are the capital asset pricing model. And, uh, and uh, we are going to use the same concept we have uh, just, uh, uh, I mean, 
uh, experienced in the, in the in the previous uh, discussion. This is the the CML line. Um, the CAPM allows analysts to split the total risk of security into two proportions, uh, namely diversifiable and market risk. Uh, you remember in uh, last <coughs> discussion we saw the types of risks. We had uh, diversifiable risk and non-diversifiable risk, or business risk and market risk. So. Uh, it provides a framework for measuring a systematic risk of an individual security and relating it to the systematic risk of a well diversified portfolio. Okay, so we have to bring in the element of the market risk, all right, and uh, uh, which is a systematic risk. Market risk is the same as systematic risk. So we can determine the systematic risk uh, of the uh, project or a portfolio. And then compare that with the with the with the well diversified portfolio that we may be uh, having. Now, CAPM says that the risk that remains after diversification, that is the risk that is inherent in the market, can be measured by the degree to which a given stock tends to move up and down in the market. Thus, the sensitivity of the returns on a stock to changes in the market portfolio. So uh, when we are using the CAPE model, the expected return of uh, an asset, right, is given as RF plus beta, this beta, beta of the project. Now, when you talk of CAPE, uh, beta or risk is measured by beta uh, as opposed to um, when we are looking at uh, when we are using the standard deviation for the other um, so for this one because of the market uh, element in it then we have to use the, the beta factor so uh, times uh, expected return of the market minus uh, return the risk free rate the risk free rate. So, um, if you can see, um, this BI, there's a way we compute that. And this represents the systematic risk that we are talking about. So, the systematic risk is measured by beta or beta factor of the security. So, beta factor is given us. Uh, covariance of return of J uh, and return of market or divided by standard deviation of the market of the return in the market. So it can also be expressed as uh, standard deviation of the project or the uh, security divided by the standard deviation of the market squared. So you can use this depending on what you've been given or you can use this, we still get the same, or give you the same uh, results. The beta factor of a portfolio is weighted average since the portfolio does not aim at maximizing the systematic risk. So uh, we use the proportions and then we have to determine the beta of every factor or every uh, project or security and then we determine the weights. So we just add uh, the beta and the weights to determine uh, the beta of the portfolio. So um, let's see with the, the assumptions of uh, CAPEM. As a model, it has its assumptions and uh, this ones you can uh, read about. So it says the capital asset pricing model is the equation that describes the relationship between the expected return of a given security and systematic risk as measured by its beta coefficient. Besides risk, the model considers the effect of risk-free interest <coughs> rates and market return. 
Now, these are the basic assumptions. One, markets are ideal. That is no transaction fees, taxes, inflation, or short selling restrictions. So uh, this is a... Uh, uh, One of the assumptions saying that uh, uh, there are no transaction costs in the market, uh, things like uh, taxes are not there. There is uh, freedom of uh, exit and entry, so there are no restrictions in the market. So all investors are averse to risk, that's another assumption, uh, which means they always try to safeguard themselves against risk and uh, tend to to select projects with minimal risk. Uh, um, marketing, so information is available in the market, it's readily available and uh, easily accessible by all uh, participants in the market. All investors can borrow and lend unlimited amounts under risk-free rate. Uh, beta coefficient is the only measure of risk. Okay. Uh, all assets are absolutely liquid and indefinitely divided. So you can divide the assets into simple units uh, from uh, mega to smaller units. Uh, and then dispose them of installments. Uh, all assets are absolutely liquid and indefinitely divided. The amount of available assets is fixed during a given period of time. Markets are in equilibrium. All investors are price takers, not price maker. Return of all available assets is subject to not also uh, subjected to criticism by other modelists so uh, but for it to work then these assumptions have to hold then we have the security market line this is another uh, line that uh, we are also going to look at but there's no much difference, only that this one is the trade-off between the market risk and the return in a well-diversified portfolio. Uh, this is similar to the capital market line, except in the following ways, how they differ. The capital market line deals with efficient portfolios, while security market line deals with the individual securities. So the other one deals with the portfolios, and this one deals with the individual securities. The capital market line deals with total risk as measured by standard deviation, all right? Whereas the security market line deals with the systematic risk as measured by beta. As measured by beta. So uh, when you talk about CAPM, basically it is the security market line we are talking about. Uh, uh, because uh, we're using beta to determine the risk uh, of uh, an individual security. So this is an SML line. It also starting with the RF at the top, not at the point of zero, but there is a risk which is zero. So it's along the Y axis. And then the risk is just like uh, what I had shown for CML, but this one, instead of uh, uh, standard deviation, we use the beta, okay? So beta is representing the risk in, in that particular uh, individual asset. So the equation for SML is given as RA is equals to, we are talking about individual, portfolio, individual assets, not portfolio. So that's why it's given as RJ. So RJ is a single project. RP is a return of a portfolio. So we know what a portfolio is. A portfolio is a combination of assets. Right? Uh, whereas uh, a single asset is a single asset, which makes up a portfolio. 
So this one is given us, uh, you can see uh, we are using uh, data to determine our return of portfolio. Sorry, not the portfolio of uh, the asset. So this RJ meaning the minimum required rate of return of, on security. RF is risk free rate of return, expected return on market portfolio, RM, uh, systematic risk on security J returns. Now the market portfolio is representative of all the securities in the market. All right, that is the market portfolio. Uh, the market portfolio beta is equal to one. So uh, the market portfolio beta is equal to one, meaning all securities in the market are represented by the market security. So it cannot go beyond one. All right, you can get zero point that but not one, more than one, okay. It can't be more than one. So um, a security with a beta factor greater than one is said to be more sensitive to systematic risk than the market security. Such a security is known as an aggressive security. An aggressive security. A security with a beta factor less than one is less sensitive to systematic risk compared with the market security, since a sec such a security is known as a defensive security. The returns of risk-free securities are normally represented by treasury bills and bonds. These are considered riskless and hence their beta factor is equal to zero. The standard deviation of returns of a risk-free asset is zero and the covariance between a risky and <clears throat> a riskless asset is also zero. The covariance is zero. So it's good to note some of these things uh, because uh, uh, it may gi be given a portfolio where you have a combination of risk-free asset and a riskless asset. Now, any question before we look at the illustration or probably we look at the illustration tomorrow. It's already time up. Uh, any question? Question, Emmebet? Yes? No, no, doctor. Okay. Now, uh, Morgus, are you there? I think he left. He's left, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, I think... Uh, uh, I can see you are the only one left yeah. because of time. So yeah. I think uh, we can stop there for today. And uh, tomorrow we'll pick up from there with continue. the illustration. Okay. And then uh, we'll agree about the assignment too. And okay. uh, I'd also indicated that presentations will be starting uh, next week. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are supposed to present, please. Uh, all of you be ready. I hope you are ready to start your presentation. So we'll be presenting. Uh, we may take the, the, the just one week or two to do the presentation. Is it Friday or sun, Saturday? Huh? Friday or Saturday? Friday. Friday and Saturday. No. Yeah, presentation. presentation. Yes, Friday and Saturday. Okay, you can. Okay. 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 So, uh, so, so uh, I think with that we can stop there. They'll uh, look forward to meeting again uh, tomorrow to continue okay. from where we step. But we'll just go through the illustration, just to see how we need to apply some of these equations that we are talking about. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, uh, thanks for coming up and uh, see you tomorrow uh, at the same time. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Good night. ለዩነት መፍጠር አላማችን ነው ዓለም አቀፍ ተወዳዳሪ መሆን አለባችሁ የnational airways እድ ኩባንያ national aviation college 
ጥራት እና ደረጃውን የተጠበቀ ስልጣና በመስጠት ብቁ ዜጋ ያፈራ ነው በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ መስተንግዶ በቲኬቲንግ እና ሪዘርቬሽን በሆቴል እና ቱሪዝም ሙያዎች አስልጥነን ተወዳዳሪ እናደርጉታለን ኮሌጃችን ካናዳ ከሚገኘው ኢንተርናሽናል ኤር ትራንስፖርት አሶሲዬሽን አያታና ከእንግሊዙ አይሲኤም ጋር በመተባበር ዓለም አቀፍ እና ያለው ስልጣና እየሰጠ ይገኛል በፍላይት ኦፕሬሽን በበረራ መስተንግዶ የምንሰጣቸው ስልጣና ከኢትዮጵያ ሲቪል አቪዬሽን ባለስልጣን ሙሉ ቅና አለው አድራሻ ከጎላጉል ታወር 22 አደባባይ ወደ ሾላ በሚወስደው መንገድ ላይ የናሽናል ኤርዌይስ እት ኩባንያ ናሽናል አቪዬሽን ኮሌጅ ህልሞን እሁል ያደርጋል